This is the Leupold Mark IV Hammer. It was intended to be a competitor to the Trigicon ACOG, and it was legitimately ahead of its time. The Hammer is one of the coolest and best products Leupold ever made. Unfortunately, it proved to be too weird to live and too rare to die. Leupold's ACOG killer got discontinued after only a few years, but the 30-year-old ACOG is still going strong. Even so, the Leupold Hammer continues to show up in unexpected places. Let's take a closer look at it. Today's video was made possible by our sponsor, Blue Alpha. Check them out at the link in the video description for the best gun belts in the world. Like the hybrid EDC belt I've been wearing every day for the last five years. Blue Alpha also makes two-layer battle or duty style belts. You can build out a complete Blue Alpha battle belt system, starting with either the traditional Molly style belt with sewn-on webbing, or their new battle belt light. The lightweight version has low-profile laser-cut Molly, a polymer buckle, and a stiffer Tegris core for a weight savings of about 40% versus the original. They also have pistol and rifle magazine pouches and dump pouches to go along with it. Blue Alpha's belts are exceptionally durable, and they're made in the U.S. by an awesome company. Thank you guys for watching the ad. Thank you to Blue Alpha for sponsoring this channel. Let's get back to the video. The implausibly cool name of the Leupold Hammer is actually an acronym. It stands for High Accuracy Multi Range. How much do you want to bet they came up with the acronym before they decided what it stood for? The Leupold Hammer is a four-power prism optic. It is essentially Leupold's ACOG competitor, and it was introduced at SHOT Show in 2011. Like the ACOG, the Hammer is a lightweight, compact, fixed magnification optic. However, unlike every model of ACOG available at the time, the Hammer has battery-powered user-variable illumination. All of the ACOGs available back then were illuminated by a combination of fiber optic pipes and tritium vials. The only way to adjust the illumination level of a fiber optic ACOG is to cover part of the optic with duct tape. The hammer was also regularly sold with a Leupold Delta Point mini red dot sight mounted on top with a bolt-on armored shroud. This configuration, a fixed magnification prism optic with a piggyback mounted red dot, is extremely popular now, but it was a hard sell over a decade ago. The Hammer carried a hefty price tag of about 1500 bucks with the Delta Point, but it was available without it. This made it very slightly cheaper than an ACOG. Unfortunately for Leupold, Trigicon introduced an LED model of ACOG the following year in 2012. Trigicon's take on the concept boasted far better battery life with much more intense brightness settings than the Hammer. The LED models of ACOG also have updated mounting bosses for the RMR, allowing you to mount them forward biased, just like the Hammer. Trigicon basically killed off the Hammer by showing Leupold how a battery-powered ACOG should be done. They had the advantage of inertia and track record, and frankly, they executed the concept a lot better than Leupold did. And Leupold was only first to market by about a year, and that's not enough. The Hammer is still a very good optic, and there are a few aspects that help it stand out from the ACOG. The Hammer has a more complex body than the ACOG. Mostly, I assume this is because Trigicon ACOGs are forged aluminum, whereas the Hammer is milled aluminum. This made it easier for Leupold to add some creature comforts to the Hammer. The crossbolt Picatinny mount of the Hammer can actually be installed in multiple places, making it possible to cantilever the scope backwards to get better eye relief or to clear a backup iron sight. The hammer also has an adjustable diopter with Leupold's classic locking ring, which does make it very robust, but also allows you to adjust it for anybody with imperfect vision. All models of ACOG have a fixed diopter, making them perfectly suited to strapping young lads in the U.S. military, but not so well suited to older gun guys who actually have the disposable income to purchase optics like these. The classic four power models of the ACOG, the TA01 and TA31, have a 32mm objective lens. The 3.5 power TA11 ACOG has a 35mm objective lens. The Leupold Hammer is a four power optic with a 24mm objective lens, so it does have a smaller exit pupil. This does result in a smaller eye box, and it means it's not going to be as good at light gathering. But in practice, it doesn't seem to matter, and some of that might be Leupold's exceptionally good glass coating, something Leupold has always prided themselves on. I've shot the hammer side by side with a TA-11 ACOG with some low angle sun coming towards the shooting position, and the hammer manages to cut through the glare a lot better than the ACOG. That's been a consistent experience of mine with Leupold optics. 
The glass quality is good, but there's more to it than that. Something about the coatings that they use just seem to have better light transmission and more glare rejection. The hammer also trades a little bit of field of view to get more eye relief. It's listed at an eye relief of 2.7 inches, which is close to double what you would get on a 4-power ACOG. The hammer's best feature is probably also the one that kept it from getting acceptance back when it first came out. The body of the hammer has a direct mounting interface for the loophole delta point optics pattern at the top forward biased position. The hammer was also typically sold as a package deal including a delta point and it had an armored shroud that bolts onto the body of the hammer. So the relatively fragile delta point would be extremely well protected. Any impact would be transferred into the body of the hammer, which is a massive block of machined aluminum, and nothing would ever actually contact the delta point itself. The original model of loophole delta point got its name because the reticle was a triangle. It was available in 3.5 or 7.5 MOA sizes. When the delta point turned pro, it got a nice round dot like a grown-up. Unfortunately, those old delta points were not the most long-lived optics. It's hard to find a hammer with the original delta point. It's impossible to find the delta points by themselves. What's worse is if you accidentally send a hammer to loophole for service, they will destroy the delta point rather than send it back to you. Luckily, you can mount a delta point pro to the same footprint. It's a little bit longer than the original delta point, and so it overhangs the back of the mounting footprint a tiny bit, and it doesn't look amazing. It's also too large to work with the original shroud. The Delta Point Pro has its own built-in shroud, which helps a bit, but it's not going to be nearly as robust as the add-on shroud from the original configuration. The Delta Point Pro is, of course, a significantly better red dot than the old one, but it just doesn't have that same look. The hammer has Leupold's CMR2 reticle, which is a horseshoe dot with ranging Stadia and BDC features. It's calibrated to 62 grain 5.56 from a 14 and a half inch barrel, which would have made it very appealing to law enforcement and military buyers. It's a really clean, useful reticle with nice shoulder width ranging bars and a clear center aiming point instead of a fucking chevron. The battery powered illumination of the hammer is weak, but thankfully you don't really need it because this is a very high visibility reticle. I would describe the illumination of the hammer as being barely daylight visible compared to the LED ACOGs which can get legitimately red dot fireball bright. The battery life of the hammer is also just not going to compete. This thing uses a CR2032 coin battery rather than a AA which is what they use on the LED ACOGs. The LED ACOGs also don't use traditional reflected reticle illumination, but rather an LED that illuminates a fiber optic pipe. That's why they can get so much brighter and have so much longer battery life. I don't think this is much of a knock against the hammer because, first of all, everybody's big complaint with the ACOG has always been that the illumination is too bright. Being able to just turn it off with the hammer is actually kind of a selling point. Also, the ACOG is a magnified optic, so the best argument in favor of extremely bright illumination is that it works well with the Binden aiming concept. But that's bogus anyway, so who cares? Operator's guide to ACOG. I didn't know you could read. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> All right. One screw set is provided with your scope. That's not true. It hasn't been for a long time. Uh, yeah. Align the curved washer. Yep. Uh, and cool. then install search screw Ryan special. Screw. Yeah. Fuck yeah. We did it. Ryan this is why men don't read instructions. First try. Yeah, because we're too fucking smart. Most of Leupold's catalog is made up of two kinds of optics. Antiques that never go away and insane flash in the pan fever dreams. The hammer is neither of those. This is just a good optic. I attribute its lack of success partly to cost. It was a bit cheaper than an ACOG, but not enough cheaper than an ACOG to really attract a new category of buyers. And if you're going to drop ACOG money on an optic, why not just get an ACOG? I think Leupold also got unlucky with the timing. Piggyback red dots are experiencing a renaissance now, but they were nowhere near as ubiquitous 10 years ago. If seeing the Leupold hammer unlocked a core memory in the recesses of your mind, it's because Leupold optics are weirdly overrepresented in video games. Arma 3, Modern Warfare 3, and a strangely large number of Ubisoft games often feature Leupold optics with complete logos and trademarks and everything. It seems like Leupold was very forward-thinking with video game cross-promotional opportunities. I always think it's cool to see real guns and especially real accessories in video games, but after Daniel Defense got sued to shit for supposedly advertising guns to children in an M-rated shooter game, I don't think we're going to see much more of it. The officially branded Leupold stuff may be absent from newer releases, but some game devs are never going to stop reusing those models. I mean, they paid for them once, right? I'm sure we'll keep getting Ubisoft games with stealth advertising for discontinued loophole optics for some time to come. 
What I find more interesting is the appearance of the loopholed hammer in The Accountant, a movie which should be to tech sector gun guys what Drive is to the unemployed. Thank you for watching, guys. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so via Subscribestar, link in the video description. And if for some reason you don't want to sign up for another account, you can also support the channel via YouTube memberships, although that's not a great way to do it. YouTube takes a pretty big cut of that revenue, and the only interesting perk is that you get to use custom emotes in your comments. I don't know. I'm sure some people think it's worth it. See you guys next time. Hi. How are you, buddy? Are you mad? Don't be mad. You're looking very handsome today, my friend. Can I see that chin?